played uh, Maryland on Friday night and Rutgers yesterday afternoon, and, and things went pretty well against those two opponents. They both are having very good seasons so far, non-conference slates. They combined, I think, to be like 18 and four uh, when the weekend started. So we knew that we would be tested. And those of you that are familiar with volleyball and our program know how challenging it is to go out and play those two teams in their facilities. Uh, credit to both uh, Maryland and Rutgers. The crowds were great. Uh, by far the most people I've seen in a Rutgers volleyball match in the 10 years that they've been in um, the Big Ten. And then Maryland had uh, their place full on Friday. But um, we won in four against Maryland, um, lost the third set, but came back and played really, really well in the fourth to win going away. Um, a good match. We got a lot of people in. In both matches, Lauren Poulter, uh, who started the season as our starting setter, came in off the bench and played very well to steady the, the ship in those matches, and we're happy about that. We also saw some action from Lizzie Carr. Lizzie came in, also played very well in the middle hitting position, so it was nice to get uh, those two in there. And uh, also, we got great play from Kenna Woolard, who came off the bench and played very well against Maryland and then started and played the whole match in the opposite position against Rutgers. So a lot of players playing. Many of them are very young. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to this, this weekend. We have two home Big Ten matches with Nebraska, who right now I think is the best team in the country. They're playing extremely well and very organized, great defensive team with lots of arms that can, uh, can terminate the ball. And then we also have a Northwestern um, on Sunday. So a good home weekend for the Boilermakers. Sam? Well, I mean, you, you build that depth by building a good program. And uh, we've had a lot of great players that have helped, you know, establish this program to where recruiting has become a little bit easier over the course of time. And obviously the female athletes want to play in the Big Ten and they want to play at the upper level of the Big Ten. And we're one of a handful of schools that fit that criteria. Uh, it's a great academic institution uh, in a safe community. So I think a lot of people feel like it's a good place to, to come to school, but it's also the training that goes on in the gym, the commitment that the players make year-round to becoming great players. And then, as you mentioned, when there's that kind of depth, it also creates situations when not, not all those great players are playing all the time. And so when you have an opportunity, which we've had very, very few this season that we could really afford to get um, some of the players that have not played a lot of volleyball into matches, uh, this so happened to be one of those opportunities, and it wasn't because we were blowing anybody out, because we weren't. Uh, we were just a little more comfortable than what we have been in a lot of the non-conference matches. But it's a good situation to have, and I think going into now some really tough matches that we'll have this weekend, we do have you know, 10, 11, 12 players that have been in the situation before, and, and they'll be ready to play uh, when the pressure gets on against people like Nebraska. And kind of going off of that, the depth of your coaching staff. I know the, the you know the three of you, Kat and, and John, have been around the whole time together. But you've built a deeper staff, and then obviously getting people in here that have different roles that probably alleviate some of the stuff that you have to worry about. How much has that been instrumental in growing the program? Well, I think all all head coaches feel like their staff is really significant in, in how well they do. And uh, Michael Burrell, who we added this year, um, who was our analytics man, um, he's doing a terrific job as well. But it's the entire support staff. And one thing that Purdue has always done in, for volleyball is giving you everything that you need to be successful. And that goes with all the way down the line with your support staff, from sports psychology to dietitian to people like Rachel, who's you know top of the line. And, sports information and communications and they people all those people are invested in our program and because of that then things go much better for the athletes and then last thing just uh, I know when you got Raven she was still a little raw tremendous athlete how has she developed into a solid volleyball player not just an athlete that can jump out of the gym in the, the three years she's been here well she did it pretty quickly Sam she uh, waited about 
maybe halfway through her freshman year before um, we gave her a start. And we gave her a start not necessarily because she was better than um, the other middle, just that she was bringing more energy and more purpose and played with a tenaciousness that made other people around her better. She still does that. She demands the most from her teammates. She's our most outspoken player right now as far as leadership is concerned. So those are some of those things. Athletically, yeah, she's very, very gifted, but she has a lot of work to do still. Um, you know, Raven is having a good season, but she's not playing at the level that I think she's capable of playing at. And part of that is she's taken over the, the leadership role, which she hasn't had to do before, and that can can sometimes impact the way that you're, you're playing. I'm not sure that's necessarily the case. Uh, the other thing is we have new setters, you know, and it's kind of, as I mentioned before, if you're a, a big time receiver and you have a new quarterback, there is a, a learning curve there that must take place. And so we're working really hard and that will continue this week uh, with all of our hitters to become more comfortable, more attached to whichever setter it is that we have in the, in the match at the same time. But the, the best thing about Raven is she's one of the most competitive individuals that you're going to find. She believes that she is going to be great and she does everything that she can to, to, to make that happen. So, thanks, Sam. Um, could you just talk about um, the previous weekend, probably one of the best defensive performances you've seen from your team all year. Um, is that, uh, what kind of defensive growth have you seen, you know, to hold two opponents um, yeah. under 200? No, that's, that's a good question. We did hold both those teams down to around 150 or less, and, and that's pretty good um, com compared to what they had been doing on the season uh, in non-conference play. We've worked really hard in our blocking. I talked about that a couple weeks ago in here that uh, we feel like there's some teams we can look at on tape that are doing great. One of them is going to be in here on Friday, and you know we, we recognize how well they block, and, and Nebraska's a young team as well. When they come in here on Friday, they're going to be – about like us as far as experience. Um, they just happen to be number one um, in their class, in their position, where you know, we don't have a lot of those here. But uh, I think it starts with our, with our serving and then our blocking ha has improved, and we're gonna have to do both those things extremely well uh, in the Big Ten. Uh, our backcourt defense should be exceptional. We have a lot of experience back in that area. You know, Skimmerhorn's been around for now her fifth year. Allie Horning in her third year, and she came in highly touted. Um, Emily Brown is back there digging balls, and uh, Eva Hudson and Chloe Chacoin are multi-purpose players that are supposed to be able to do everything. And there's some things we're working on with all those players to continually make them better than what they are on digging the volleyball or blocking the volleyball if you're a front row player. And the good thing is they're listening and they're working hard. They understand that for us to be able to compete in this league and finish high in this league, that we have to get much better defensively. But we did play better defensively, um, and, there, and Maryland had some really good arms. So we knew that we had to be really good against them. Uh, I don't think that Rutgers has the same type of you know, fast arms and, and power that what Maryland did, but yet um, they did have one player that caused us lots of problems, and we did improve as the match went on against her. And then uh, you touched on the setter split. Uh, what influence is that in a game, you know, determining how much um, Poulter will play or Anderson? Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a heck of a question because the idea is to win the match. I mean, that's, that's why we're playing. You know, we want to win the match. And we knew going into those two, they were winnable matches for us, ones that we, if we play well, we win. And there were a couple of times during the match that things started to go a little sideways where I thought it was maybe time to make that change. And in, instead of playing the freshman, who still has a lot to learn, um, is way ahead of the curve, but she has a lot to learn. Um, and first time on the road in the Big Ten, uh, there were a couple of times I thought in her eyes I saw some things that, you know, she wasn't as comfortable as she can be. And, um, and Poulter, who is in her fifth year of running a team, um, is a nice person to be able to pull into the match and settle things down. And that's exactly, fortunately for us, that's exactly what happened. Uh, we want to get Taylor as much time as possible. She is the future of, of, with our setting situation, there's no doubt. And she's extremely talented. But there are times that a veteran player um, who also is getting better because she's coming off of a, you know, a knee injury you know, seven months ago. And so she's still working to get better. And so to give both of them opportunities, I think is important because I, I can see both of them helping us down the road. 
And then uh, you obviously touched on Nebraska's talent. It's it's obvious with their with how they've played this year. Um, what are some of the keys to the match there with with you, where you guys can kind of pull an upset? Well, I hope you can come to the match because they're worth the price of admission uh, to watch them play. Uh, they've got incredible athletes. Um, they have the top ranked setter in last year's class that will be setting for them. Um, and she's really good, a, a player that we certainly recruited and we were in the game with. But uh, once she visited the Nebraska campus and went to their camp, all of a sudden she knew where she was going to go. And uh, so we lost out on her, but fortunately picked up on the great athlete that we have in Taylor Anderson, who's going to be a dandy. Um, I, I just think that serving them tough because they have so many offensive weapons, if you don't keep them off balance, and help dictate where they may have to set the ball. You know, there are some teams you play and you know who they want to get the ball to in each rotation because they have a priority. This is the best hitter, next best hitter, third best hitter. Okay, you don't see that as much with them. They can send anybody and those people can put the ball away and make life tough for you. So you have to be better with your serve to take them out of what they want to do so they become more predictable. Your blockers have to be really, really good. There's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. And if you don't defend the one-on-one -on -one situations well with your block, and luckily we got, we got athletic players as well. Uh, you know, our right side players are, are young, but they're, they're touching 10, 5, 10, 6, and can, can set up a good block if they get caught in a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, obviously, Eva Hudson can do the same thing. Chloe is a dynamic blocker, but a little smaller, so we know they're going to try to go Every team we've played has tried to attack in that position. Our middles are making great strides. I'm really happy with the, w the progress our middles are making, but it's going to start with our serving and blocking, and then we just got to play harder than anybody in the country uh, for us to, to make plays against these guys. Right. And then last question. Um, as you uh, approach the weekend with um, the big one in Nebraska, then you've got Northwestern on Sunday, is there any concern with, with overlooking that Sunday match? No, we're just not set up to be that way. Um, you know, we just look at one match. And right now we'll look at uh, Nebraska, and then when that match is over, it's not going to be the next day. We have at least a, a day in between to do all of our, our work and prep our team and, and get them ready. We've had a great rivalry with Northwestern. I mean, we've won more than we've lost against them in the last several years, but uh, they can jump up and bite you at any time. They, they've got several transfers that are, are really highly touted, including Maddie Chin, who played for us for four years, will be in their lineup and is having a great season. So I'm really excited that she's uh, you know, made that move and, and is in the lineup playing all the time and doing great. So it'll be fun to have her back here in Holloway Gym. But no, I don't think that there'll be a letdown. I, I don't feel like we've done that all this year. I think we've been ready to play for every match. Yeah, thank you. I have one question on behalf of Kelly. Okay. Um, so with our win uh, against Maryland, it was our 1,000th program win. What does that mean to you and for the program to reach that milestone? Well, you know, I don't know how many programs have won 1,000 matches, to be honest with you, but I know Carol Dewey won a bunch of them uh, when she first got here. And that was the first thing I thought of when I saw your social media um, post after the match, the first thing I thought was of was Carol Dewey and the teams that she had and uh, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of matches that, that she won by building really the best Big Ten program back in the 70s and early 80s. So that was what I thought of and then I, I also felt good that, um, you know, we've been able to sustain a good program here for a, a length of time and you just start thinking about all those players, and certainly I got a, a nice text from Carol Dewey. I got lots of nice texts from former players, and so it, 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 it was good that, to see that out there. Uh, beyond that, it really doesn't mean much more than that because I look ahead and I don't, I don't look too far behind. Tim? Just one for me, Dave. Uh, Eva Hudson, where has she made the most strides from her freshman to her sophomore year? Just in her first contacts, uh, whether it be serve, receive, or defensively, uh, she's much better than she was even when we finished the season last year, where she's much more comfortable passing serve. She's much more comfortable, you know, getting in a position to dig and make plays. Um, you know, I told her yesterday uh, in a break in the action, I said, we need you to be so involved defensively because you're one of the best athletes in the Big Ten. 
And if you're one of the best athletes in the Big Ten, you have great potential to make plays defensively. And sometimes when you're a, a hitter in the back row, you have this mentality, you're there to hit. Well, she's there to do everything. And that's the mentality that, she, that she, she's developing is, I'm going to dig, I'm going to make plays, but when the ball is set to me, I'll be ready to go attack it out of the back row as well. But I think, you know, her blocking – really developed late in the year last year and that's continued you know we have to have a really good left side block when you have slide hitters and big right side players like the Beeson kid we're going to see against uh, Nebraska um, her, I've always felt like the hitting takes care of itself I mean you don't have to motivate anybody to go up and it's like shooters in basketball okay you don't have to motivate people to shoot um, so same thing with attacking the ball she's she's going to be a great attacker but you know, I, th I think she's made a lot of progress. And as she moves forward in the scale, whether it's to go play internationally or play with the USA team, that's who she needs to be. She needs to be like Kelsey Robinson, who's a starter on our national team right now. That's the kind of player she has to be, where she's a, a not just a four or five tool player, maybe a six tool player that can just do everything. Yeah. Sammy? Get the microphone there for Sam. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Since you mentioned the international team, uh, I guess could you touch on what Ashley uh, Evans and what Andy Drews have done with Team USA and now putting themselves into the Olympics? Yeah, it, it, it's been a great run for our, our Purdue alumni um, all summer long. Um, and even before that, even in, in the spring, we had uh, Danielle Catino, Andy Drews, and Ashley Evans that were training in that 20-person group uh, with Karch Karai and USA Volleyball. And then... They went to their qualifier for the Olympics, which I believe helped me out. Where was that at? Tokyo was the Olympics. No, but where they, they played in the qualifier. It was, was it Poland? Okay, Poland. Yeah, I think it was in Poland. Great crowd, great crowd over there. And they did what they had to do. I think they went five and one or six and one, and uh, they lost a match that they probably shouldn't have lost, but uh, they did enough to, to qualify for the Olympics. And both Ashley and, and Annie in that group that were over there and Annie of course everybody would expect to be there but Ashley Evans has come out of nowhere um, and the, I guess the lesson there is why Karch enjoys her so much is because she outworks everybody and she did that here um, she's not a big time athlete she's just a great kid very smart very determined very competitive and spends more time in the gym than anybody else. And she's just, they're all living dreams if you're playing on the Olympic team, okay? You're living a dream, but nobody living a dream more than what she is. And of course, you know, the, the success that Annie had when they won the Olympics for the first time for USA Women, uh, she was a vital role in that happening. So it's, it's pretty exciting to, to look back, you know, when you, I think of all the things that have happened in Purdue Volleyball, Annie Drews leading that team to the Olympic gold medal for me, it was one of the most satisfying experiences I've had as a coach, and I wasn't even coaching. I was just watching. Yeah. Okay, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Israel, good to have you back, man.